So how did you end up coming to uh, Salt Lake City in the first place? I came here for a ski trip. Just, to, just to visit. I, then I never left. <laughs> then you literally like, I'm not coming back. That was the first time I got involved with a woman. Mm. And I was like, oh, no wonder I don't like men. That's what all happens. Yes, it all The skiing happens. is great. I met somebody. At what point did you decide to go into public office? If you remember, in 1994-95 school year, there was a group of kids here who wanted to form the first gay-straight alliance club at this high school. Mm. And the legislature ended up banning all clubs. And you can still see Bryant Gumbel going, they banned all clubs, all clubs. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you remember yeah, this yeah, moment? Yeah, it was yeah. really yeah. quite a moment on the news. Um, but I felt bad. And I was sitting on my couch watching TV, watching this evolve, and wondering, what is, what is my role here? Mm -hmm. I ended up running for the Utah legislature, and I was the first openly gay elected official here. I just don't think uh, people outside of this area could conceive that Salt Lake City would have an openly gay mayor, yes. and then several mm -hmm. openly gay people running for mayor. You know, I live in San Francisco. I can't remember a time where several openly gay people right. went for mayor. Well, so. and in fact, San Francisco has not elected a lesbian no. for mayor. No. If you look around us, it's, you know, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, not states with large LGBTQ populations. Yeah. And if you're identifying as LGBTQI and you live in one of those states and you're trying to find your place... Salt Lake seems to be a steady place to land. You're still in an area that is familiar to you. Yes. It's kind of like how Atlanta became where yeah. a lot of the black gay people in the South were like, I can't be gay in my hometown, but I can go be gay in Atlanta. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's right. Yeah. And so suddenly people look up and go, when did Atlanta become so black and gay? And it's just <laughs> like over time, we just sort of walk right. over there and says, it's cool, everybody. Yeah. And you can even see it, especially like on Pride Day. We have one of the largest Pride festivals in the country, you know, because so many people will drive in from those yeah. other states just to come to it. Yeah. When you campaign with, I'm sure you both campaign at Mormon events. And so then I wonder, do those people then go vote for you? Absolutely. I, I have many, many supporters. I mean, at the end of the day, people want to see more evolution happening. Mm -hmm. You know, we... We're losing way too many children yeah. to suicide here, and many of the kids are identifying as LGBTQ and are feeling isolated from this religion they grew up in. Yeah. And so until the suicides end, until we are embracing one another, we as a community have to rise to the challenge. Every major religion has the difficulty with, the, with trying to accept uh, the LGBTQ community. And they do. So that's why I don't want to pick on Mormons about it. I that. know. It's it's hard. I was raised Catholic, but I don't practice my religion anymore. And, you know, as a family, we're so diverse. Um, and we come from multiple backgrounds. I have a son who is Mayan and born in Guatemala. And I have a son who's African-American and born in Georgia. And my wife was not raised Catholic. And we can go to the Baptist church, but... Yeah. We couldn't get married there, yeah. and so how do we fit in there? My yeah. one of my kids fits in there, but we don't fit. In, you know what I mean? So you're absolutely yeah. right. Like yeah. there's not an organized religion where we all can see ourselves in the space. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. It's hard.